Welcome everyone to our YouTube channel Decode ITES. Decode ITES provides you single learning platform for multiple IT technologies. My name is Rohit Garg and I am having 13 years of experience as database administrator, database developer and trainer. You can also follow us on my personal blog MS SQL Fun. Introduction to SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. What is SSMS? Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio IDE Integrated Development Environment is a powerful GUI tool with a long list of features and options. SSMS is very useful and user friendly for all users like DBA, developers, testers, or students. Top actions you can do using SSMS. Connect to local or remote SQL Server database engine, analysis services or integration services or reporting services instance. Explore server properties and server objects. Explore database properties and database objects. Open new query, pass the query, perform execution. Save results in grid text L file. Activity monitor. Launch other SQL Server tools like SQL Profiler or DTA database tuning advisor manage SQL server agent jobs connect create or manage registered servers let me take you to my SQL server instance and we will explore SSMS when you launch your SQL server management studio at very first page it will ask for instance name and user credentials by any chance if you cancel it so we will see how we can recall the pop-up or connection window this is we are talking about connect to server wizard or connect to server window it's asking for server name and authentication type sql server authentication or windows authentication in case you cancel it you can go to connect in object explorer and select the server types database engine analysis services integration services reporting services also we have some azure connectivity options so let's go to database engine and we got the pop-up this is our instance name here you need to put your local instance name to which you want to connect windows authentication or sql server authentication in case you select sql authentication you need to provide login id and password and for windows authentication it will integratedly use the account by which you log into windows server or windows machine ssms is very powerful tool along with Connecting with local instances, you can use SSMS to connect your remote SQL Server instances available in your network. From one machine, you can manage complete environment SQL servers by having a remote connection in SSMS. This is our local instance. This we get connected right now. So we have successfully made the connection using connect to server window. This is the instance name which we have passed and this is the Windows login that we have used to connect. It also shows the SQL Server version on which this instance is running. So this is how we can create a connection in SSMS. The next is explore server properties and server objects. To explore server properties, you just need to click right click on your instance and go to properties and this is our server properties general tab. This is very useful. It gives multiple details like what's the instance name which product you are using, which operating system you are using, platform, version, how much RAM you have, how much processor you have, and have multiple details. The next useful tab is memory tab. Here you can check how much minimum or maximum memory is assigned to SQL Server. In security tab, it will display the authentication mode on which your SQL instance is running, login, auditing, whether it's configured or not. In connection property, there are multiple other parameters you can set. Database setting tab. This tab is very useful. You can specify your database data log and backup file location, and it will universally be applicable for all databases on this instance. We have advanced tab as well, which has some additional features like CTP, cost threshold for parallelism, and MAC degree of parallelism. So this is how we can explore SQL Server properties and we can make changes as and when required. 
how we can explore your server objects so server objects one is logins which we can explore by going into security and we can find all logins available at the instance then we have a server roles also a part of server object also direction server object we also have link servers which is very useful triggers we don't have any endpoints backup devices if we added any so these are the server objects we can browse them so these are the server objects which we can explore using ssms so we will check what the next topic is so next topic is explore database list database properties and object so to explore database list you need to expand the database folder and it will show the available databases on this instance in system folder it will show the available system databases in sql server to explore the database properties you just need to right click on any of the database go to the properties and it will show the properties of that particular database in database properties this is the journal tab which show that when your last backup happens when your last transaction log backup happens was the name of the database database status database owner when it was created total size of the database total size of database free space available in database and collision in files tab it will show the number of files your database currently having you can also add any of the file and remove any of the unrequired file from here it would also show the details of file groups you have next is option tab option tab is having multiple details like it will show the collision details and you can change it recovery model of database compatibility model of database containment type of database and further multiple details which you can turn on or off from here we have some other tabs like mirroring and transaction log shipping these tabs can be used to configure these features how you can browse the database objects similarly like server objects you need to expand the database and you will find multiple folders in tables you can find the tables are there in views folder you will find the views in programmability folder you will find the store procedures functions database triggers all these database objects also in security folder you will find the users and roles as a database object for to check property of any server object or database object you just need to right click and go to properties you just need to right click and go to property it will give the basic detail of that particular object so next topic is open new query query parsing execution results and execution plans to open a query you need to click here open new query when you open new query it by default use the master database you have a drop down option here which will list down all the available online databases on this instance and you can select any of the database you want to use like we will use the adventure works dw so we will write one query to execute on sql server instance select the star from first is database name so database name is adventure works then schema name and these are the tables so guys this facility which is listing down all the objects before i am typing it is called intellisense intellisense is very powerful feature of ssms which buffer all the database objects and server objects and helps you while typing the code so you can enable or disable intellisense from here currently is enabled let's disable it and let's check whether i will still get the help of database of that no i'm not getting anything because intellisense is disabled once you enable it and you will type it will show you the help again so this is very helpful for developers while they are doing a coding because they need not to remember the object name or available objects in particular database this facility or this feature automatically gives you a list of choice our query is ready before executing it let's pass it passing will just check the syntax of the query and let us know in case anything is wrong so it said passing is good so we will execute our query 
So our query successfully executed and results are in grid. So our query is successfully executed and we got the results in grid format. So this is the place from where you can change the result format. So currently selected to result to grid. So one option we have is result to text. So we have changed the option and we will execute it again. So now we got the results in text format. We have one more option result to file. Let's see what it will do. When you execute it, you will get the option to save the file in which output of all this content will be saved. So let's save output. We will save it on desktop. We'll change the file file type. So let's see. So our details are available in file. So by default Microsoft gives you all these three options to save the results. The next is execution plan. For this particular query, you can have an actual execution plan and estimated execution plan. This is the place by which you can generate an estimated execution plan. So we got the estimated execution plan by just clicking it. This option will not execute the query. It will just generate a plan on the basis of assumptions and approximation of data and stats. But when you select generate actual execution plan and execute a query, it will execute the query and gives you an actual execution plan. In this situation, both plans actual and estimated plan are same, but there are multiple cases where you can find estimated and actual plans are different and which is causing the actual performance issue of your environment. So let's go back to the PPT and see the next topic. Activity monitor. Activity monitor is one of the powerful monitoring tool comes with SSMS. You just need to right click on your instance name and you can get the option of activity monitor. So this is our activity monitor which is monitoring the processor time, waiting task, database IO, batch files or batch request per second. When you click on processes, it will monitor the current process running on server, the source weights, it will show you the buffer IO, buffer lache, memory and other related details, data files which are highly used files, expensive queries of particular <coughs> expensive queries of this particular instance and active expensive queries. So difference is recent expensive queries are which are executed which are not currently running and current and current expensive queries which are currently running on the system. So activity monitor is very useful at a time of issues or performance hits on your database server. So you can use activity monitor to monitor the things and take action on basis of that. So next topic is SQL Server tools like SQL Profiler and DTA. So in tools tab, you can go to SQL Server Profiler and open the SQL Server Profiler for you. In tools, you have an option of launching SQL Server Profiler and Database Tuning Advisor, which can help you in your day-to-day -day DBA life. So, so other than this in SSMS, you also have an option of SQL Server Agent. By this, you can create the jobs and manage agent properties. So this is our job folder under which you will find all the jobs are there. So this is job monitor and job monitor can be used to monitor the currently running or last status of the jobs. Other than this, we have the error log monitor monitoring. You can check the error logs from here. List of features available in SSMS is countless. There's a huge list of features Microsoft provided under this tool. I suggest to explore this tool and I can bet that you will keep learning new feature of this tool. Also Microsoft keeps adding new features in this tool with the release of new version. So this is the completion of our today's chapter introduction to SSMS. Thanks for watching. Do like, share and comment our videos. Also subscribe to our channel.